Hi, this is Andrew Wolf. So in this video, Hi, this is Andrew Wolf. So in this video, you will learn about stable angina and how it's caused by an imbalance between the oxygen supply and demand to the myocardium or the heart muscle and how this is caused by a stable plaque or an atheroma uh, that is causing the coronary arteries to be um, partially constricted and causing reversible ischemia that occurs with ex exercise but re resolves at rest. So what do I mean by a mismatch between oxygen demand and supply? So demand actually increases, uh, oxygen demand increases in the myocardium uh, when the heart rate increases. Um, so when there's an increase in, in heart rate, when there is increased uh, contractility, so the muscles are working faster and they're working harder, okay? And supply actually is, you know, primarily when we talk about supply of oxygen to the myocardium, we're mostly talking about perfusion and to a lesser degree to um, systemic oxygen saturation and hematocrit. So these are, are variables as well, but the primary variable is, is perfusion. Now typically the body can increase perfusion quite, quite um, significantly. So, you know, at rest our perfusion is a baseline of, you know, a baseline multiple of, of one, and this can increase during exercise to up to six times normal perfusion um, to, to the myocardium. So what happens with in stable angina is that um, the ability to increase our perfusion to the myocardium gets significantly reduced because of atheroma. So we're going to talk about that next. So how does that happen? Okay, so here we have a cross section of a normal coronary artery. And as you can see, it's wide open. Um, there's nothing obstructing the, the lumen. Now, with patients that have coronary artery disease, they start to develop um, atheromas or fatty plaques in the coronary arteries. And these can occur at various places and they're more troublesome in some places than others. And what these plaques look like, if you look at the cross section of the artery, is something like this. Now, this, um, you know, so, so we have a, a fatty plaque here that is partially obstructing um, the lumen of the vessel. And this has an impact on the amount of blood that can flow through. So this actually decreases the potential flow through the vessel, right? So when the person is at rest uh, and demand is low, the flow is not, is not that high, right? But when the person exercises and demand increases, then they are going to start to have um, restrictions in this flow. So if we restrict potential flow and we ask for a high flow, then we may have an actual decrease in flow at, uh, at high, during high demand states. So what's going to happen? Well, during those high demand states, a person, um, the coronary artery disease downstream of this area is, going to, um, is, is not going to be able to keep up with demand and we are going to air, end up with an area of ischemia. Okay, so again, ischemia means that there is tissue that is not receiving adequate oxygenation. Now this ischemia, do not confuse the ischemia with infarction. The tissue is not dying, but because it has reduced oxygen flow, um, it is causing the cells to have to shift from aerobic metabolism to anaerobic metabolism, which causes a buildup of, of acid. Uh, lactic acid in the tissues, and that is actually what is causing the uh, the chest pain. So this ischemia causes pain, which is the characteristic symptom, chest pain of angina. Okay, now why is it stable angina? Well, it's stable because uh, the plaque is actually stable. So a stable plaque results in stable in stable symptoms. So uh, the plaque is slowly increasing in size over time. So it's not causing any acute changes. Sure, this picture here actually depicts um, time as, as a plaque sort of increases over time, okay? Now I wanna kind of talk a little bit about the uh, decreased flow potential. So this is sort of a, um, an, a perfusion. So this graph, I'm going to draw a, what I'd call a 
perfusion curve. And so here we have at the bottom the degree of occlusion in the coronary artery. So this is the degree of occlusion and this is the um, myocardial oxygen, oxygen demand. Um, so if we are at rest, the myocardial um, oxygen demand is at baseline or one times normal, right? And as we go, uh, the perfusion actually doesn't decrease at all until we get to around 80% and then it um, decreases obviously down to zero by 100%. But if we have someone working at maximal exercise, so they're really working out, they're going out for a jog or they're running up a flight of steps, myocardial oxygen demand can increase by six times. And typically, if we have no occlusion, of course, demand and supply are equal, okay? And what's interesting is demand and supply actually stay equal to around 60%. And then we have it curving down here. So what does this mean? Well, typically, um, people do not even notice symptoms until the artery is about 60% occluded. Okay, so, um, so what does this mean? Well, I had talked before about how stable angina is characterized by a decrease in potential flow. So if we try to increase flow up to six times normal, when an artery is 60 to 80% occluded, we're going to bump up against uh, the limits of this potential flow because of the, the atheroma is decreasing the amount of flow that can go through the artery at that point. As the atheroma continues to grow slowly over time, um, people are going to start to have, the patient is going to start to have symptoms at lower and lower levels of exercise, right? So, um, you know, so a person initially is going to have chest pain when they are running up a flight or two of steps, but over time, and I'm talking over periods of months to years, uh, the amount of exercise that's required to cause symptoms is going to is going to decrease. So, as and we're going to work our way down to baseline as this atheroma grows in size over time. So stable angina progresses slowly. It has stable symptoms and it's characterized by reversible ischemia that does not lead to infarction. Okay, and this is all because of the underlying stability of this plaque that grows and progresses slowly over time. Okay, thank you very much.